all. Happy Tuesday morning. It is Tuesday live time on YouTube for Slowly Rested channel. We are here every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And today we're talking about tapping and why on earth we have not tapped yet. I tell you what, it is hard to wait. This time of year, I think all New Englanders who are sugar makers are just chomping at the bit and ready to put some tap holes in anything that has bark on it. Um, but it's so important to be patient and that's what we're gonna talk about today, why you need to wait. In the meantime, you know, you have to enjoy what you have. You have to realize that soon enough, the winter cold, horrible months will be over. I mean, that's not true, I love snow. We all, my whole family absolutely loves snow. And there's so much that you can enjoy about snow. I mean, it's beautiful. You can go snowmobiling. You can go on a hike with snowshoes. It's, there's so many reasons to get out and enjoy it. It's just hard when you've had so much of it for so many months and you're ready for spring. And you get the tiniest little hint that, wait a minute, spring is an actual thing and maybe we're gonna have spring again. Like maybe someday we'll see the green grass again. Oh my gosh, you get excited and you start thinking, oh, let's tap some trees but it's not time yet. Last year, we made the mistake. Last January, we had, you know what, I could honestly say I didn't make the mistake for once, and it's not often this is the case. For once, I can say my husband was the one who made the mistake. He, um, I told him, you know, it's just a little too early. We had two days in January, mid-January last year, that were beautiful. I'm talking close to 50 for most of the day, two days in a row, and of course, freezing at night. I mean, perfect sap conditions, right? Why not tap trees? Well, the problem is when you looked at the extended forecast, you saw there was more snow in the future, and you saw it was gonna be a lot of cold days in the future. Um, and that's the key, not only to find days that have above 40 for the daytime temperature and freezing at night, and by the way, you want that above 40 to not just be you know, the peak of the day for half an hour. You really want it to be a large portion of the day. The temps are above 40. And you want to have many days in a row. I recommend looking for at least four or five in a row in the forecast before you start tapping. Um, because the problem is, yeah, the sap will be flowing on those two days that you have those great temperatures in January, but then it's going to stop because everything's going to freeze up again. And you have already put your permanent holes in the tree and they destroy that portion of the wood in the tree. That wood's never going to be productive wood again. And you are going to have no more sap flowing in about six weeks. Why is that? Okay. It's amazing, but trees are like, they're miracles. They are able to heal themselves within four to six weeks. They start the healing process. So when you drill that hole in the tree, within a month, it's already started to heal itself inside the bark. So your taps aren't going to be productive because that hole is already closing off. And every time you drill a hole, you wind up with something inside the tree, I'll show you a picture, called a stain column. And that will expand out inches away on each side of the hole that you've drilled. And that entire stain column is now dead wood. So next year, or later in the season, when you go to drill another hole, if you are within that stain column area, you're not going to have a productive tap. So that's why they recommend when you put a tap in, you always want to go at least three inches to the right or left of a previous tap, and you always want to go up a few inches, and basically over time spiral around and up the tree so that you will always have a productive tap is the idea. Um, let me show you this stain column. So you see the tap holes, you can see each hole, and then you can see the long stain column that is now dead wood. So around every single hole that this person has tapped, you can see the area that they will no longer be able to have a productive tap. So that's why it's important. You want to get a long life out of your trees. They're wonderful. They provide us such amazingly delicious liquid sugar every year. So why not take good care of them so that you can have that wonderful opportunity to tap them for generations to come, right? Um, now you do have other options. If you tap too early, some people are advocates of tapping early because they say they like the taste of the syrup better. Um, 
when we tapped last year, we drilled 12 taps in mid-January. And after two days worth of collecting, everything stopped until almost the beginning of March. And we had literally one quart of syrup to show for it. Now, come the beginning of March, those taps were no longer effective. We were getting almost nothing out of them when sap started flowing again. And we had permanently, you know, put the holes in the tree. It was done. So could we have tapped those trees again? Yes, we could have went over three inches and up two or three inches and put a new tap and we would have gotten sap. But eventually, pretty quickly, if you do that twice a year every year, you're going to exhaust the tree. Um, also, some people have a policy that they drip, tap early and then they re-drill the same tap. So they'll go back and have a slightly bigger bit and re-drill the tap so the hole is a little bit bigger um, and then the sap will flow better. The problem with that is you're only going to get possibly a few more days of really productive sap flow from that hole. Um, maybe a few weeks, maybe, but it's not going to be a productive tap like a brand new one would be. So I, my policy is, I don't know, I just feel like why go to that effort for that few quarts of syrup and then have so much less later on? Those dozen taps that we put in last year, they would have produced, who knows, 12 quarts more of syrup for us if we had just patiently waited. So we learned our lesson, and from now on, we are going to be waiting. In the meantime, what do you do? You get out there on the snowmobiles, you go out hiking, you, you do whatever you can to remind yourself that winter is soon ending, take a chance to enjoy what's left of it and just wait. Um, you also can, you know, get your supplies ready. If you are maybe for the first time going to tap this year, you have a few weeks still, if you're in the Maple Belt to look up everything that you need and order your supplies, feel free to go to solelyrested.com. I write a lot about sugar making and I have a whole list of resources there of things that I highly recommend you get a hold of um, if you're tapping trees. You also, if you are going to be tapping in a few weeks and you don't have a reverse osmosis system. Um, I'll put a link to what that even means in the comments and I'll do a YouTube video I'm sure in another few weeks or a month or so and show you our system when it's all working. Um, but basically it is a filtering system that filters out the extra water, not all of it, but filters out the water in your sap so that you have a much higher consistency of sugar when you go to boil down and make your syrup. So it saves you a ton of time and it saves you so much in propane or wood. So it's really cost effective. It's a great system and you can work on building that. You have enough time left to get all your supplies and build an RO system so that you are ready when it is really sugar making time. So I hope that that helps you a little bit if you're wondering if you're ready to tap or not. And I just want to encourage you, hold on. It's just a few more weeks. You can do it. And then hopefully you'll have six weeks or more of wonderful sap flow with all kinds of delicious syrup, maybe more than you can even handle. I hope you're having a fantastic day in your neck of the woods and check out the links in the comment, comments and um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be here every Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hope you can join me live next week.